Hello everyone, welcome to Underground FPV. My name is Warwick and uh, I know everyone's mind at the moment is on the Dark Knight, um, but I'm not here to talk to you about the Dark Knight. I'm here to talk to you about goggles and uh, everyone's been talking about these new goggles coming out and I wanted to give a, uh, a bit of an honest opinion on it. This is the truth revealed about the HDO. Now, uh, a lot of people will find it surprising and um, there's a lot of reviews online, so I'm not going to go into uh, the comparisons between them because uh, I can see Oscar Liang's already done one and um, good video to watch is Stingy Swarm. Uh, I'm going to link that down below. Uh, Tommy's review is awesome. Um, there's another couple of reviews which just don't do it justice because I don't think they actually did a proper review on it, uh, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. Now, um, I have a set of HDOs here. Now, mine have been undercover for a long time and uh, a lot of people may have actually seen um, me wearing these goggles around and you may have even borrowed them yourself and not even noticed. Now, um, I've got plenty of goggles to look at. I've got these ones, I've got the HD3s. I've also got a set of uh, Top Sky ones here that you've seen on my channel floating around. Um, the Recons over here. These are an awesome set of goggles by the way, especially if you're looking at box goggles to get into it. You got a set of these or a set of these. These ones definitely are much, much better. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the HDO. Now, when I got my HDO, which was these, um, I immediately took them out of the case, put them into my undercover case, but left the HD3 stickers on. And what I found very surprising was, is at that point of time, when I got my set of HDOs, I didn't actually have a spec sheet, so I didn't know what the field of view was. So I wasn't able to tell anyone. But also, the people who tried these goggles, there we go, you can see the HDO label right there. So the people who tried them actually didn't know that they were HDO goggles. And a lot of people were saying to me, man, what kind of camera is this? This is unreal. I've got to get whatever camera you've got on your quad. Now, um, the surprising thing is that every single person that tried them, not a single person mentioned the field of view. Now I do believe it's because the OLED panel is so good inside, it's such a different level of clarity that you can't actually tell the difference and your mind isn't thinking about the field of view. I mean when you really measure the field of view, there is actually no real measurement in our field of hobby to actually accurately measure, measure the field of view properly. So um, you know, spec sheets are spec sheets, but what the telltale sign for me was was basically anyone who actually tried these goggles, and I, I wanna make it really clear, that anyone who tried it as a blind test, not knowing that these are an HDO, never even noticed that the field of view was a tiny bit different. So all these people talking about online, oh, the field of view is a little bit smaller, or something like that. If you're one of those guys that mentioned the field of view, but you actually tried my goggles and never mentioned it, uh, it just goes to show that it actually doesn't make that much difference. But what I do find amazing, flying with these goggles for a few months now, um, in particular the, the clarity and the resolution, uh, it, it's really hard to explain. It's, I think it's because of the contrast ratio of the OLED screen and the way that the OLED works. Um, instead of uh, LCD filters colors of light um, through the LCD and shines a backlight through and, that, and then the LCD filters colors to give you a colored pixel whereas an OLED is actually a colored pixel. If it's red, it switches on a red. If it's blue, it switches on a blue, um, and so forth. And if it's black, it's off. So you get the deepest, clearest blacks, which gives it a really good contrast ratio. And um, and for me, when I'm flying, that means as I'm flying through trees and, and so forth, and I'll find that I can pick up so much more detail. And we're limited by, um, obviously, how many TV lines we can transmit in an analog signal. But when you're using something like um, one of the Cadex cameras, the SDR1, something like that, I do have one up here on the wall. Let me just grab that for you. Something like this. Something like this camera here. Um, you'll notice that you get a lot of clarity in the lens and it's... Um, and as you're flying and you see all the sticks and trees and branches, that actually makes a huge difference. Now, swapping between the two, when you're, uh, when you're actually flying, you, you fly like this, and then you swap like this, 
and you keep going like this, um, you can definitely tell the difference straight away. It's just more crisp and sharp. Uh, I don't need to show you any video footage because there's also plenty of that online, but what I did want to tell you was the truth about the HDOs because I don't think anyone's really done it um, any real justice by actually doing any blind tests like what I did. And actually the blind tests were by accident. I, now going back to think about it, I should have done some um, sneak peek footage and filmed people's reactions about it. Um, but I didn't think of it at the time. Uh, but th th it is what I noticed that immediately people were like, what kind of camera have you got? This is absolutely amazing. And so that just goes to show you in a blind test with, I don't know, easily 60 or 70 people trying my goggles over the space of a few months um, without even knowing that they're HDO, it does go to show me that there is a massive difference that people will not, one, notice that the FOV is different, but actually notice the color and contrast difference. I mean, it's an OLED panel. Uh, you can't get much better than OLED. Um, I have tried the LCOS, for example, the Top Sky ones. Now, look, the Top Sky ones, they've gone through like four iterations so far, I think. They've gone through about four iterations of, of these goals to get them close to being right, but they are still an LCOS panel, and the LCOS doesn't even come close to an OLED. So, um, if you were looking to go HD, I mean, you can look at all the other ones and all the other ones using uh, anything OLED. It's just not worth it. Um, sorry. If you, you can look at all the other ones, and if any of these other ones are using LCOS, it's not even worth it. There's no point. Um, one of the biggest downsides to LCOS was as, you, as you're as you flying along, you'll notice that um, as the trees flash past you at a specific rate, the shutter on the inside of the LCOS has a shuddering effect and you notice that straight away especially if you're like going um, through trees and there's light filtering between trees and it flashes across the glass uh, you'll notice you'll get a shuddering effect I found it quite annoying um, but that is how LCOS works LCOS basically has a polarized filter and a shutter and then the shutter basically does this um, to allow light to come through and give you different colorations whereas the OLED is either a pixel on or off uh, the color is the color, same as buying an OLED TV, and that's probably one of the biggest things that we know in the market right now, is if you want to go out and buy a TV, you go and buy an OLED TV because it's one of the best that you can get, and there's no, no words can explain without trying, uh, without trying the goggles to actually show how good they are. Now, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, the power filter. So the, the power regulator on one side has been upgraded, and this was a major drawback to some of the older goggles. Um, that as soon as you put in something like the LaForge or the Furious or something, you'd burn a rivet cable, and that was not very good. And um, the biggest thing is that they've upgraded that power section in here so that you get good, clean power and enough power to power all your modules, um, including your clear view and so forth. That and uh, the in your immersion. Um, a new immersion receiver that's coming out that one as well so that you don't actually have any problems I think that's probably one of my biggest um, other excitements other than the fact that the entire thing is OLED um, so so there you go a uh, bit of a rundown on it and I just wanted to be clear and open and kind of blow the lid off what everyone was talking about online and actually give some truth to the whole thing uh, and I know I haven't been trying for a few days I've been trying these for a few months the OLEDs on a little bit of wood stuck down as a development board with wires hanging off it and plugged it into uh, 20 adapters to get it to work properly and then um, when they were first looking at this and we looked at the difference between um, LCOS and OLED way back then which this has been in the works for a long time it's not something new that they've been developing and refining this for quite a long time and I was blown away even back then and between then, from the start of the development to now, there's such a huge difference in how far they've come with the technology. And it's, if it was easy to do, all the other manufacturers would have done it already. And it's probably one of the reasons why Fatshark is the best on the market. There is, without a doubt, um, you know, the Fatsharks are the Fatsharks, they're the pinnacle. And um, all the other manufacturers always keep trying to bring up a new goggle, but they're not quite there. And they're cutting corners and things like uh, chromatic aberration, the corners purpling on the lenses. 
um, ones that don't fit your faces and so forth and I've always found the fat sharks fit me and they work and for me that's probably the biggest thing so the only thing I can say for you guys out there watching this review um, go out there find someone who has a set try them and then decide because uh, a lot of people are commenting oh the field of view is not so great blah 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 but you haven't actually tried a set go out there and give it a go and if you don't like it at that point for sure go ahead and say you don't like it but try it first uh, that, that's all I can say because um, when I tried them I was blown away and uh, obviously seeing the development from where it came from until now um, that blew me away for starters but then when I got my own set nothing even comes close and I don't think I'll ever switch away okay it looks like I've overloaded the power system on my uh, lights in the studio so uh, Lucky I'm at the end of the review anyway, so uh, this is the review on the Fat Shark HDO goggles and don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you want to see more information about it, put your comments below and uh, fly fast and hard.